you regularly go over the word count. You use a lot of fluff and filler. You ramble, you waffle, you generally faff about in your writing. Well, if that's you, don't worry because all of us do this in the beginning. And waffling and rambling is often something that we return to and we have to unlearn it. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you some strategies for stopping the waffle. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley, and for the last 20 years, I've been supporting social science students in UK universities. And the waffling and the rambling and the overshooting the word count are very, very common. Now, there are some things that you can do to cut it out though. To cut it out, to cut it down, to, to generally stop waffling. And I'm waffling right now. So let's get to the point. There are five key things we're gonna be going over in this video. Firstly, planning before you write. Secondly, realising that you need to spend more time reading than you do writing in the beginning. Thirdly, when you do start writing, do that concisely. Fourthly, staying relevant and on topic. And fifthly and lastly, tackling the draft shame. Firstly, you've got to plan before you write, because if you dive straight into writing and you are just trying to get those words down, get them written, get your word count up, you are going to end up writing a lot of nonsense. You're gonna have this stream of consciousness that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It won't make a lot of sense to other people and when you read it back, it won't make a lot of sense to you. So you will just end up getting really frustrated. Now, I can understand why people do this, why people just sit down at their laptop and tap, tap, tap away and try and get their word count up. There's this kind of word count anxiety that goes on and people like to be able to say, I've written 2,000 words, I've written 3,000 words, but you need to just lose that, you need to get rid of that because this word count thing is not doing you any favours because, let's face it, anyone can write two, three, four, five, six thousand words of nonsense and that is exactly what you're going to end up doing if you don't plan before you write. So you need to get really clear about your purpose. So why are you writing the thing that you're writing? What is the main aim of doing this piece of writing? There will be an overall aim, a thing that you want to achieve. And here are a couple of examples. So that's the first thing, the bigger picture aim. Then you need to take that aim and break it down into a series of sections, a series of stages. Think about the steps that you'll have to take to achieve that aim. Think about the journey that you're going to have to take the reader on. Then use that to outline individual sections of the thing that you're writing. You can use this to structure your work. And here are some sections, some outlines from the examples that I just showed you. Feel free to take a screenshot if that's helpful. And remember, it's absolutely fine to change your sections later, but you need some to start with. So always begin with between three and five headings to use as a provisional structure. So that's the first stage, plan before you write. So when you have your main aim, when you have your sections, you've got a really useful framework that you can then use to guide the rest of your writing. Secondly, you need to realise that in the beginning, you will be reading more than you're writing. A lot of students who ramble do that because they are not confident in what they're writing about. And they're not confident because they haven't done enough research. When you're unsure about what you're writing, it is quite tempting to start using fluff and filler and padding it out, using elaborate language or lengthy sentences to just kind of give the illusion of volume and to give yourself that sense of security that the word count is going up. But when you're doing this, you're not actually creating anything meaningful. You are just rambling. You need to ensure that before you start writing anything underneath those headings, that you know what you're writing about, that you've done a sufficient amount of research. And when you are doing your research, when you are reading, make sure that you are being incredibly focused and strategic. So for every single thing you read, you should be able to ask the question, what is this relevant for? What section is this going to relate to? And you should be able to give yourself a really compelling answer to that. What can be a really helpful thing to do is to print out your outline, is to print out your main aim and your key sections, and then just keep those to hand as you're doing your research. So you'll have like a one page thing, it might even be a post-it note, that you just keep next to you whilst you're doing your research, whilst you're doing your background reading, and just keep referring back to that and saying to yourself, okay, which of these sections is this helpful for? What is this going to help me do? How is it relevant? How is it useful? 
It's also helpful to be really strategic when you're taking notes on the thing that you're reading. And in order to be able to do this properly, you need to learn how to read critically. Now, I'm not gonna go into loads of detail about that in this video, but I do have this other video here if you need some help with that. Thirdly, when you do start writing, you need to make sure that you are being as concise as you possibly can. Now, some people will tell you not to censor yourself when you're writing, to just literally sit there and write it all out in full. And it doesn't matter if there's fluff, it doesn't matter if there's filler, just bleh, get it all out of your system. I would challenge that advice. I would say that that's actually quite bad advice. I think the thing that you should be aiming to do is to write as concisely as you possibly can in your first draft and then cut it down afterwards. So if you are limiting the volume of stuff that you are writing, you have got less that you need to cut down at the end, if indeed you need to cut any of it down at the end. Here are three tips to ensure that you are writing concisely from the minute you put your fingers on that keyboard. Firstly, you need to stop repeating yourself. There is a tendency to make the same point time and time again, just to ensure that the person reading it or the person marking it knows that you have understood this particular thing, because if they see it multiple times, well, they're gonna be in no doubt. Now, you need to stop doing that because you are wasting your valuable word count. The person who is reading your work, the person who is marking your work, they read it the first time, they understood it the first time. So you don't need to keep repeating the same point again and again and again. Now, there is a difference between repeating something and reinforcing something. So there might be occasions where you want to revisit a point and perhaps present a new piece of evidence to back up that point, and that's perfectly fine but just be really clear when you're doing that. So refer back in your writing to the thing that you mentioned earlier. So as previously noted, as noted above, that kind of thing. And then the person who is reading what you're writing is going to know that this is just a reinforcement. It's not an unnecessary repetition. Secondly, use active voice rather than passive voice. This makes your writing much more direct, much more engaging, much more clear. And here are some examples of the difference between them. So please make sure that you are using active voice rather than passive voice, because when you look at the difference between the number of words in the active voice sentence and the number of words in the passive voice sentence, it might only be two or three words, but that adds up to a lot over a large piece of writing. So the more you can use active voice, the more concise, the more direct you can be, the more content you can include. Thirdly, cut filler. So eliminate words like that and very and really. This is going to make your sentences more concise. Also, get rid of fluff that isn't adding anything to your work, like in these examples. Next up, you need to stay focused, stay relevant, stay on topic, don't go off on a tangent. You need to ensure that every single thing that you are writing is making a contribution towards the arguments that you're trying to present. It can be really helpful to keep that outline plan next to you whilst you're writing up any piece of work that you're doing because it keeps bringing your mind back to the so what question. So how is this relevant? What is it relevant for? How is it helpful? How is it useful? And here are some questions that you can use to ensure that everything you're writing is relevant. Lastly, you need to stop the shame around draft versions of what you're writing. You need to be sharing your writing with your tutors, with your supervisors, in order to get some feedback on it. And I think it's helpful at this point to bring up this fantastic quote. A lot of students want to wait until their writing is good or very good or perfect before they send anything off to their tutor or their supervisor to take a look at. And this is a really big mistake because these people can be so helpful to you in developing your writing, in ensuring that you do get it to the point where it needs to be. And very often people will say, oh, but I've read the stuff that my supervisor's written. I've read the stuff that my tutors have published and it's so good. 
Well, yes, it is good, but the version that you're seeing is probably like version 23 of it. What they started off with looks nothing like what they ended up with. So they have gone through a process in order to get to that finished piece of writing and they can help you go through that process as well. So you just need to get over that kind of shame and that cringe that stops you sending draft material to people. You've got to think about your tutor or your supervisor kind of like a personal trainer. So when you see personal trainers working out with people, they need to see somebody doing an exercise slightly wrong or completely wrong in order to be able to tell them how to do it properly. So we need to see the level that you're at at the moment in your writing in order to be able to advise you on how to make it better. Now, if we don't see any of your writing whatsoever, it's really, really difficult for us to be able to advise you on how to make it better. And there you have it, five tips on how to stop the waffle, stop the ramble, and generally write more concisely. Firstly, plan before you write. Secondly, read more than you write in the beginning. Thirdly, when you do start writing, do it concisely. Fourthly, stay relevant and on topic. And lastly, stop the shame around the drafts. Just send it to your damn tutor. And that's it, we're done. So I'll be back in a few days with another video on how to supercharge your studies. I'll see you then.